brand and the product and help us to, um, I suppose, grow the brand quicker yeah. and make sure that it is, you know, top quality, which yeah. is what our customers expect. Mm. Principles, and yes. yes. Principles, Principles and pants. Principles and pants. Principles and pants. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Well, Lady, thank you very much for coming in to have a chat to us here on the Riverside Show thank and for bringing in some of the stock as well. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Glasgow has a thousands of metres of disused railway lines and many could still be in use today. But did you know the history of the railway line which went from Bridgeton to Parkhead South? Well, earlier we explored the East End to find out more. Glasgow it was the second city of the Empire and it required a transport infrastructure to serve that particular need. People will walk by them every single day of the week. They won't realise that underneath their feet, not all that far below uh, the surface of the road, there's railway tunnels that were carrying hundreds and uh, thousands of passengers of the day to and from, you know, their place of work, their place of leisure uh, and so forth. Old railway tunnels can be dangerous places. I work for um, Glasgow City Council. Um, we are responsible for the structures within Glasgow, road structures within Glasgow. This week, uh, I hope to, to be able to show you most of the, uh, some of the unused tunnels that we have in Glasgow. We're walking uh, down to the London Road Tunnel uh, mouth at the Brigton Cross End. This currently is an operational railway. It was a junction. And the London Road Tunnel is no longer uh, operational. This uh, was as was known as Brigton Cross Station. It was the Caledonian Railway, which was closed in the, the early to mid 1960s. Uh, so it's a fairly long platform, uh, which uh, they had to have in these days because the trains were very, very long. Along this way, it takes us towards the tunnel mouth. And as you'll see, it curves round and eventually it, it runs uh, under London Road itself. I'll take you over and show you. This railway line has been closed 50 years. Uh, so what you, do, you see is 50 years of dereliction, I suppose. But, you know, it's not unusual for us to uh, consider reopening. Uh, old railway lines. You know, you can't fail to be impressed at the scale of engineering and building things like this. Many of the uh, the bricks that they would have used to provide a, a bright fascia on the, uh, the walls are coming off. So this is us heading towards the tunnel mouth. Uh, you'll see it's pretty dark and uninviting. And of course the other end of the tunnel uh, is at Parkhead Stadium in the Emirates uh, Arena, uh, almost three quarters of a mile away. Well, I'm walking on the track bed where the railway would have been, uh, and over to my right uh, is a well-known city landmark, uh, Celtic Park. The railway station, uh, which was known as Parkhead North, would have been over just a quarter of a mile away from here. Yeah, yeah. 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 The other side of the road. The other side of well, what you have here is you have, looking at the tunnel mouth, about 150 yards in front of us. Uh, it's quite an incline, and the steam locomotives coming out of that tunnel would have had quite a climb. Uh, so the smoke would have been belching out of the tunnel. That would have been pulleys for signalling equipment. Pulleys there and the cables would have been... So there would have been a signal here somewhere. Well, that sounds a lot should be the right key. We're in. <laughs> well, the height of the tunnel is quite high in comparison to some other railway tunnels, which would seem to suggest that the locomotives that they had in the early days would have been taller than maybe other railways. What you will see in the wall is the figure 1200, and that's the length of the tunnel. When this tunnel was built, it would have been an imperial measure, which would be nearer probably about 1500 yards. Uh, we have many, many assets like these of old railway tunnels uh, and cuttings. Uh, and our next visit will be to uh, the Botanic uh, Gardens uh, uh, Hidden Tunnel. 
And joining us now to tell us a bit more is Councillor Alistair Watson, who you just saw in the video there. Thank you so much for joining us. And You're welcome. That's absolutely fascinating. Mm. I didn't know anything about that line. How important is it to Glasgow and how important was it? Well, well it's one of many uh, disused railway lines and tunnels uh, that exist under the streets of Glasgow. Uh, many Glaswegians won't know they're actually there, but they're part of a legacy in which, you know, when Glasgow was the... Uh, the second city of the empire, the transport infrastructure that the city had, uh, that was required to move people around. Mm. So it shows you how important, how big our network must have been yeah. back then. So when, uh, how long was it in use for and why was it shut down? Well, that particular line was in use for over 100 years wow. and uh, it closed down in 1964 as part of the infamous beaching cuts. It was Part of the line uh, which exists now uh, to Brigton to Domalloc was reopened in 1979, um, but that part of the line never never reopened. I think, if anything, if we uh, increase the notoriety of, of these pieces of infrastructure, we may very well get a desire to, to reopen and expand the rail network the way it once was. Mm. Do you think that would be a big benefit to the city to have the rail work network out and just expand it again? It would be. Everybody knows how bad the traffic is in the city. Uh, and, you know, and if we're going to shift more people onto public transport, then we need to provide the infrastructure to do that, mm. uh, to get people about. So could this be reopened and how much work do you think it would take? Well, it could, you know, but these... Pieces, uh, th these pieces of infrastructure are substantial pieces of engineering. If anything, they were over-engineered and they were built to last. Uh, yes, it would take some money and probably some serious study uh, by structural engineers. Uh, but uh, on the whole, I mean, th they're as good as the day they were built. So they yeah. are in still relatively good condition today, then? I, I would say so. Apart from the wear and tear over the years, well, they're well, still... Well, that's right, you know, but they've been standing the test of time for over 100 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think with a wee bit of work, you know, they could stand the test of time for another 100 years. That's incredible. It a is. testament to the engineering that obviously put them together. I, know. I, I didn't even know that was there until we no. started doing some work on this piece and a lot of people watching, like you say. And if this was, if, if, these, if this tunnel was reopened now, what areas of the city would it reconnect in this day? Well, you would be talking about plugging all the gaps in the East End and completing the regeneration of the East End. The railway line did connect Toll Cross in the Carmel area uh, and... Uh, uh, eventually uh, parts of uh, South Lanarkshire uh, and Newton and Camus Lang. So, uh, you know, the, the, the railway network was quite extensive. You know, it's not just this particular tunnel uh, that we're talking about. I mean, there is quite a substantial amount of them elsewhere in the city, most notably the West End. So mm. it's fascinating yeah. that it's all there. How did you come across this? Have you? Is this something you've always known about? Well, I, I spent over 30 years in the railway industry, you know, and I spent 27 of these years as a train driver, you know, so you pick up that knowledge and you pick up the enthusiasm uh, for knowledge uh, in the industry. Uh, and Glasgow was one of the main centres of, of uh, railway technology for a substantial uh, number of years, you know, way back in the last century. So... Uh, the infrastructure that we had is part of that legacy. Mm. Uh, and I think any city uh, in the UK, any city in Europe, uh, would give their eye teeth for what we've got here yeah. in our doorstep. It's unbelievable. And Alistair will be back with us in the new year uncovering more of these tunnels, which we look forward Can't to. Yeah. Yes, indeed, in the West End, I believe. You will. Yeah. Well, uh, Alistair, we're looking forward to it. Thank you very Thank much you so for joining much. us. You're welcome. Thank you. Now, coming up after the break, we'll be trying a Christmas special tea for a tenner and we'll see how Colin is getting on making Christmas candles. That's all next on The Riverside Show.